Hey Maker, in this video I'm going to take you inside of Photoshop Elements 2023 and show you how I'm going to go about editing two photos that I shot this week. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. In this video, I will be featuring a product by Novelty Yours Candles. If you want to check out their shop, you can check the link in the description below this video. And of course, I will be using replica surfaces as I am a replica ambassador. So in this specific image here, we're going to be editing more for that dark and moody look versus the light, bright and airy look inside of this image. So the first thing we're going to do is go to enhance, adjust lighting, and we're going to go to levels and I'm going to click on this little white dropper. So this is going to allow me to kind of set the white point in the image. So what you want to do is you want to go to the whitest part. You're going to take this dropper, go to like the whitest part of the photo. And it's going to really kind of brighten things up. I'm going to grab this slider and I'm going to take it down just a little bit because I feel like that's just a little too much for the um, you know dark and moody look but typically when I shoot my photos I do underexpose them to make sure that I do not lose any detail in the products and then I just make adjustments in editing so it looks good so we're gonna hit OK I'm gonna go back to enhance at the top and I'm gonna hit adjust color remove color cast so this one's gonna kind of bring it back to neutral as far as kind of the color temperature. So I'm going to come in here, same thing. I'm going to click a portion that is, should kind of be white and you may not see any adjustments made. So if not, just hit reset. You can attempt to try like a different area. So that made it super cool because we went with like a darker spot there. I'm going to reset. So let me show you the preview. So if you check this preview button here, you can toggle on and off between the edit. So this one's really warm. This one's, you know, kind of cool looking as far as the actual candle goes. I mean, the entire setup. I'm going to hit reset. I'm going to pick a spot here. I kind of want to find a middle ground. So I'm going to toggle this on and off again. And that's a little better. It's just very subtle. But it makes, let's see before and after makes it just a little less warm but we still have that overall warm look okay there the next thing I'm gonna do is go into enhance and go back to color and adjust hue and saturation a lot of times when we do the dark and moody photos we like to take the saturation down a little bit so that it isn't so vibrant so if I go real far, we start to lose color altogether. So I want to find something kind of middle ground. So let's go back to the beginning. That kind of just mutes everything a little bit, but not too much. Let me see. I'm going to use the preview. Kind of go back and forth. Okay. And I really like that. Now, real quick, Photoshop Elements is a partial version of Photoshop Pro or Photoshop CC. The benefit in Photoshop Elements is it's a little easier to use than Photoshop, not as overwhelming. And it also comes with just a one time payment. So you can actually purchase Photoshop Elements online and it's a one time payment about $100 on Amazon. And I typically have to update that software every two to three years. So if you want to get into more pro features, but you're not ready to jump into Photoshop Pro and pay that monthly fee, this would probably be a good fit for you. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're actually going to use the clone stamp tool. 
to make some adjustments to to fix a few things in this image. Well, first, let's zoom in. I want to show you we have a little bit of a crease in this label. And when it comes to your product photos, it's super important to make sure that you kind of look at those tiny details. Those tiny details are going to set you apart when it comes to your competition. They're going to make your images look more high end. So we really want to focus on these things. So there's a couple parts of this image that I'm going to fix here. One is the crease we have in the label. I attempted to pull the label up to fix this crease and it didn't work. So I'm going to fix this corner as well. And then this front portion here, we've got this one piece of sugar that's just like really popping and it's kind of grabbing my attention. So first, let's start with that. So I'm going to increase the size significantly here. I'm on a Mac. So the shortcut for this is I'm going to hit option and click and that's going to allow me to set the point. How the weld tool works is essentially when I hit option to grab a portion of this image, I am essentially taking that part and cloning it onto the part that I want to get rid of. Hence the clone stamp tool. So it's super important to make sure when you're doing this that you're grabbing similar colors, you're grabbing similar shades. So you can tell here that we have a little bit more shadowing on this side of the candle than we do on this side of the candle. So we really want to make sure we're grabbing kind of the same look. And sometimes you have to play with this. It also helps to really kind of zoom in while you're doing it and then also zoom back out to kind of check things before you finish. I'm going to increase my size a little bit. The option to select the portion that I want and see if I go too far, it's starting to pick up this. So I'm going to reselect option, put that over there. Okay. And then now we're going to work on this line here. And you'll, the reason you notice that this side is lighter and this side is darker is because essentially it has depth to it because it's a fold in the sticker. So the light's coming in from the left and we're getting the shadow behind it. So we really want to kind of pull from over here. We don't want to get too close or we're going to see that shadow. So option. And if you notice, Every time I click, you'll see that little plus sign. That's where it's pulling from. So you have to watch, make sure your plus sign isn't getting too close to where it's going to grab a different portion. See, now I'm getting too close and it's starting to grab this part over here. You can either click through to grab to get the selection you want, or you can also drag. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and see how we're looking. Okay, so it's not turning out the best. Undo some of this. So sometimes you have to go in and out to get really get what you want. Mm -hmm. oh, that looks better. And then we'll go up here to this corner. And we're going to leave a little bit of the edge, like the border of it. But we're going to take away that portion so it doesn't make it look flipped up. And then we got rid of that little dot of sugar down there. Looking good.
One last thing I want to do to this before we save it though is I want to add a vignette to the outside just to make it look a little dark and moody. So I'm going to go up here to filter and correct camera distortion and on this side you're going to see vignette. So we want to darken the outer edges. I'm going to pull that down pretty good to make it nice and moody. The only time I recommend doing this is when you have darker surfaces. Vignette can look very amateur if you're using lighter surfaces. This just adds kind of that fine touch for the moody portion. And I can uncheck the preview here and just look at the difference. So it just adds a little extra layer of moodiness and then it allows the product to kind of pop a little bit more. Now I've made all the edits that I want to. So I am going to save this vertical image for social. So we're going to go to save for web. And typically I keep my online images between 2000 and 3000 pixels. So I'm going to change that to 2000. That is step two of resizing. Step one is cropping. And step three is going to be reducing that file size. But when I reduce the pixel dimensions, my file size reduced to under one megabyte. So we're going to keep this at a quality of 80. And that is step three of resizing. If you need more information on resizing, I will link a video in the description below. Once we make those adjustments, we're going to click save. And then if I wanted to use this specific to my shop on Etsy, I would need a landscape. So I'm going to go to crop and I'm going to crop it to a 4.3. You can use a 4.3 or a 5.4 for Etsy. It does display both ways depending on the device. Etsy does display your images in three different aspect ratios, 5.4, 4.3 and a square. So if you want the most up to date information on the video that I released recently on which aspect ratio to use, you can grab the link for that in the description below. Got that nicely framed. Again, we're going to go to file, save for the web. We're going to reduce our height to 2000 because Etsy recommends 2000 on the shortest side, which is our height. Watch this number when I hit enter. So cropping was step one, resizing, adjusting the pixel dimensions was step two. Etsy recommends that we have our file size under one megabyte. This is, so I'm going to keep the quality very high at an 80% and click save. Let's jump into image two. So image two, we have some perspective issues going on here where our backdrop is not lined up property. Our lines are not straight. We need to fix that. So I'm going to go to filter correct camera distortion. And we are going to, you'll notice this is up kind of the up and down perspective and this is left to right. So I'm going to adjust this until I feel like my top leveled out. So if I preview, you'll see it go back to that, leveled it out a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same to the bottom until that feels kind of leveled out. Click OK. Now we're going to go into enhance, go to lighting and do our levels. I'm going to hit the white and I'm going to pick this corner over here. It's going to brighten everything up a little bit. And again, I'm going to reduce it just so slightly. This is what it gave us. Reduce it just a little bit. Click OK. Go to Enhance, Adjust Color, Remove Color Cast. I'm going to select probably about, and sometimes we have to play with this. Before, after. I think it looks pretty good. It's a little warm there. This brings it back to kind of the proper color temperature. I'm going to go into enhance and go to color and adjust hue and saturation because I just want to see what it'd be like to take. I don't want the orange to really overpower this photo in general. So I'm going to bring that saturation down a little bit. That preview. See, it's just super, super orange and vibrant. 
We're going to dull that a little bit so it doesn't steal so much focus and the rest looks great. Next, we're going to go in and fix that label again. So I'm going to zoom in real good here. Clone tool. Okay, let's zoom out and see what it looks like. It looks pretty good. And thing, we'll fix the corner here. This one isn't as bad. I'm going to fix that piece of sugar in the middle, too, because it's going to drive me crazy. Maybe it's not sugar, but it's a random. It's really small because I'm not zoomed in as much. Okay. Stunning, stunning. Let's zoom back out enough to where we can see. So now we need to crop. So I'm going to be cropping for social and also for Etsy. So step one of resizing is going to be to crop to the proper aspect ratio, which technically if we want to do that. It would be 16.9. This would be perfect for a reel. So I'm going to go ahead and crop that for a reel and then save for the web. Again, I'm going to adjust this to 2000, reduce that file size a little bit, it may go even a tiny bit smaller. 1500 is the smallest that I will go. And that takes us 890. We'll keep our quality. I try to keep my quality around an 80 if I can. And then we'll click save. And then I'm going to undo that crop so that I can crop for Etsy. So I'm going to go to no restriction and put in a 4.3, which is what I find to be most versatile. We're going to do a file, save for the web. And Etsy wants 2000 on the shortest side. So this is going to be step two is adjusting the pixel dimensions. That also does reduce our file size a little bit. It didn't enough though. So I'm going to go to high and that took us down to a 615. So 60% quality and click save. I'm going to click undo because I want you to take a peek at this surface. This is actually a new surface that Replica Surfaces is going to be releasing July 21st at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a limited time. This is called Pinescape and it is absolutely stunning. I love this color palette and I paired it with Scandinavian wood. So if you want to check out this surface, head to replicasurfaces.com slash by Christina Nicole. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.